Hey everybody, it's Lori. I'm back this week with a quick tutorial uh, to show you how to make these thread drops. Um, in my last floss tube video, I showed you those thread drops and I got a lot of questions and requests concerning them, how I made them, where I got the supplies, and so today I'm here to show you how I go about making them. I'm not a paper crafter. I do not scrapbook. These are just I went out, I decided I wanted to make them. I did see the quick um, show and tell that Teresa Kitten Stitcher had did a few videos back concerning some thread drops, and I just kind of went with it. So these are some of the supplies that I use to include scissors. Here are the cutters. These cutters here are from Hobby Lobby. Um, I think they're just their brand. I will say last weekend, or last week, they had these cutters on sale for 50% off, so just know that they do put them on sale. Um, these have a little sliding door to help cut the, um, catch the pieces as you cut them, um, so that they, you know, won't be like confetti all over the house. This is a cutter I got, and this is by Fiskars. This is a cutter I got from Joann's a couple weekends back, and... They had them marked down, and I thought this would be perfect. This is what it turns out to be, minus the hole. I put the hole in, but this is what it turns out to be. And I wanted to use this as a thread drop. I really didn't like the shape so much, but I will say I think it would be wonderful for, and I used it for this. So this was the freebie that I picked up and um, kitted up for the, my friends and I put the name of it, the designer name, and the weekend that we got together and stitched it. I also picked up some cardstock because as you know paper's a little too thin for this and you can see it's not totally, it's not a really thick paper but it's thick enough, let me go back, it's thick enough that when you put the thread on there, as you can see I'm putting a little bit of pull to it, it's not going to rip the paper. Um, regular paper, of course, is too thin. I picked up some cardstock at Hobby Lobby again. It's different shades of neutrals. And you can see it's thicker than paper. It's thinner than poster board. I also have a couple of these pads. This is a large pad, so I won't show you. But these, I think I picked this one up. At Joann's, it's different colored papers. For those of you that don't already paper craft, I think this was like $3.99. You got coupons at Joann's, you can use them. You've got coupons at Hobby Lobby. They had these two, both sizes. I already had this one. Lots of different beautiful papers. The good thing is, there's seasonal papers, there's papers to suit your style, papers to suit my style. Um, you're going to find something you like. I was trying to look for things that were smaller print. You don't want to go, or in my opinion, you, would, you wouldn't want to go with something like this because you're not going to get that whole piece. So see what I'm saying? You, you're not going to be able to punch with something like this to get that look. So you want to do something with a paper with a small print on it. So what I did when I made these is I took this paper, this cardstock paper, and I took some Elmer's Craft Bond spray adhesive, sprayed the paper, and put this paper on top. So that's where the thickness comes. This in itself I think would make maybe just a little too thin, but just the added strength of one more thin piece of paper kind of helped. So like I said, I sandwiched with the glue. I put the glue on the cardstock and put the colored paper on the top. Give it a little time to dry. And so like I said, you're going to turn it, turn, this is what it's going to turn out like. So I've got the small print here and I've got the cardstock on the back. Just so you know, what I like about this is because one side is clear, the other side is beautiful, this side is plain, I can put the thread color numbers there. Today I did something a little different. And so I did um, 
learn what not to do. So I decided I wanted to get poster board, which I cut just regular poster board. It's like, what, two, four dollar um, at the one dollar store at Walmart. And a few nights ago, I glued the paper, just like with the last time, onto the poster board. You see already, same glue I used before. Look at that. So it didn't stick perfectly. So just word to the wise, I'm going to use this today for the tutorial just to show you how it punches. But I think because this paper, the, the um, poster board, maybe this side would be better because you have one side that maybe it has a more rough side where the glue can adhere to it, where this was the, the clearer um, shiny side. You can't see that now because the... Um, so maybe that was my error, that I didn't do it on the rough side. But anyway, we're going to go with it for now. I know that Teresa Kitten Stitcher, when she showed her video, she showed using Coca-Cola boxes. And what I mean by Coca-Cola boxes, you see that how thick, thick this Cheerios box is. She didn't have the decorator paper, but she did use this type of paper to make hers, which is going to give it just as sturdy a paper as the poster board. So just keep that in mind too. I know this is cheap and two big sheets for a dollar, but you can also keep some of your boxes from your foodstuffs and kind of save a little money and recycle. So there's that too. So anyway, I have four different sheets that I've already picked out paper and adhes the paper onto the poster board. And that's what we're going to use today. I'm going to start off with this one and just show you how easy it is. So let me get some of this out of the way. Each die has one cut. So to get a thread drop, with this drop I have three different cuts. So I used this one, small circle, this one, medium circle, and this oval to get this shape. With this shape, I used this die, I'm sorry, this cutter, and this small cutter to get this shape. Just keep that in mind as well. I also bought this shape because it's just one of my favorite shapes, which is a heart. But I know that it's not going to, you understand that when you put it on a ring that it's just going to sit in one of the corners of the heart there. So maybe we'll do that just for fun today. I also use this cutter, and I use this scrapbooking cutter so that when I cut the dies, it's going to give me any excess paper that I can't use because it's the extra left over after I cut. I can cut the paper and utilize every bit that I possibly can. All right, so let's get this out of the way. And let's start. So the cutter, as you see, has a straight slot. And we're just going to slide that in like this. And I'm going to put it right to the edge to try, like I said, to maximize my paper. Oops. Now the reason that is so loud and it seems to be so rough is because I'm using that poster board. So we're going to slide this off. So there's my first piece. I'm curious how that paper is going to do. Actually, it's sticking pretty well on that edge. So there's that one. So then the next one I'm going to do is, once again, you've got a straight edge all the way through. But because this is a rounded edge and this is a straight edge in here, I'm going to put it kind of to the center of this cutter. See where this cut um, caught that circular piece? And like I said, for fun, I'm going to use this heart piece, and we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to slide it towards the center, snap, and there you go. Let me see how that's going to work with, I'm just out of curiosity. That's not too bad if you do the heart upside down. Hmm. So there's one thread drop. You can pick up these extra rings for your drops. 
at Hobby Lobby. They do have them in the scrapbooking section. They do have them. This one happened to come from Joann's, actually, back where the needles and the bobbins are. This is one and one and a half inch rings from the scrapbooking section. You can see they're from their album rings. You can even get fancy. <laughs> Here's some colored rings that I picked up, once again from the scrapbooking section. They just come from Hobby Lobby. They were $3.99. Use your 40% off coupon. I was using these during Mania when I was kitting up things to keep my threads together. So, so once again, you have a quick gift you want to, you want to make up. You're in a, um, a swap. Easy to throw in a few thread drops. A cute little ring, minimal expense, makes your threads even more beautiful than they already are. You can color coordinate it. You can put the thread numbers on there. You can put your project name, any special. You can put happy birthday, Merry Christmas. These would make great gifts at Christmas time. Um, and like I said, with the variety of papers and cuts that you have, there's many other tag shapes I saw. This is what I mean by tag shape. There's other tag shaped dies, um, a little more fancy ones at Joann's. I will say out of the two brands that I have, this Fiskars, of course, is an easier for me to use. It punches well. It seems to be made a little more sturdy. This one's lighter weight. This one's more heavyweight. Um, but it, I did not have any issues didn't really have issues punching with either one of them. I just preferred this one. This, of course, because of the name, you're paying for the name. It is more expensive than the Hobby Lobby. But all in all, depending if you're only going to make them every now and then, these are cheaper. They work just as well. Um, what else can I say? I will say with this one, you can see that you can put a grommet on your hole there. And so that particular one came with grommets in the packaging. So you can use them repeatedly. Um, you can also, just as you can pick up colored rings at Hobby Lobby, you can pick up colored grommets as well. As well as a compa dial, which is a, a um, scissor-shaped contraption that, that installs grommets in paper. Or I've used it in my cross-stitching before to make needle books and things. Um, you're also, when you're doing this, of course, you're going to need scissors. Um, keep, a, keep some of those handy, cutting paper apart. And other than that, I think that's it. I hope I answered all the questions. If not, just link them below. Um, like I said, what I've learned from this, and even talking it through with you guys, if you're going to use paper, board, paper poster board, you can see that it is even more sturdy than the ones I have. Um, but make sure you use the, um, put the paper and the glue on the side that is not glossy. Like on this, this is the glossy side. I did bring some Eileen's down, the Eileen's Tacky Glue. You can see I use it <laughs> pretty good. Um, this may be, you may be able to use this as well in the place of the spray adhesive if you've got, you know, a sponge roller or a paintbrush or, a, you know, just a painting brush that you can smooth out that glue and it would work just as well. I would give it some time to dry so that it doesn't gum up your cutters. Um, and I think that's it. So once again, if you have any other questions, just throw them down below and I will be happy to answer them. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you have a wonderful craft and cross-stitch field weekend. I will talk with you all again soon. Bye-bye.